modern Haifa Tiberius Road follows the same route as one of the more important roads in the region 2,000 years ago. Whoever passed here could see a large city perched on a nearby hill. It was in Sephori, the important Galilee town known then as Ornament of All Galilee. army which ruled the country, and caravans of merchants, roamed past the olive trees and plantations of Tsipori, and green fields where crops flourished in the rich soil of the Bedna Tufal Valley. Farming was the main source of income of the people of Tsipori from ancient times. There is a legend that the old men of Tsipori used to sniff the soil after the first rain and could predict by the smell how much rain would fall throughout the season. Clear, fresh water bubbled from the local springs. Some of it was diverted to an underground reservoir near the city. Large holes carved in the rock, pools, and dams a large-scale, sophisticated engineering project where the abundant water supply of Tsipori was stored. Water for drinking and washing, for ritual baths, and for gardening. Tsipori, then the capital of Galilee, is built on the Roman plan, like other cities in the Roman Empire. In the shops and the market stalls, the inhabitants and traders meet people from the surrounding villages. Here they buy and sell Tsipori's farming produce, famed for its quality as well as spices, cloth, hides, silver, and gold jewelry and perfumes. Delightful odors, a confusion of voices and sounds, and a rainbow of colors. The people of Tsipori generally enjoy a life of prosperity and peace. When the Great Revolt breaks out against the Romans, they decide not to take part. They sign a peace alliance with the Roman general Vespasian, and this saves their city from destruction. They hear about the fall of the rebels' strongholds in Galilee, and the massacres conducted there by the Roman soldiers. Then word arrives of the fall of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple. After the Bar Kochva revolt, the focus of Jewish life shifts from Judea to Galilee. Tsipori retains its Jewish character and enjoys periods of prosperity. The rich build themselves fashionable homes, some very luxurious with large courtyards, cellars, storerooms, and many rooms. Here in the Triclinium, they recline on couches, leaning on cushions, nibbling fruit or delicate dishes washed down with plenty of wine. Here, the Jewish descendants of the old established aristocratic families mingled with the non-Jewish residents, local governors, officials, and army officers. Relations between the two communities are generally good, based on mutual tolerance. The theater at Tsipori, like all Roman theaters, presented performances of a merrier and lighter bent. For the Jewish sages, the theater symbolized the essential difference between Greek Roman and Jewish culture, and they cautioned against theater going. But the Jewish community does not necessarily heed their warnings. The encounter with the foreign culture is inevitable. It takes place in every street corner in Sikori. Scenes like this one, depicting the life of the Greek god of wine Dionysus, or mythological figures like the centaurs, or the Amazons, appear on richly decorated mosaic pavements in public buildings and private homes. It is hard to tell. It is likely that the Jews all 
also decorated their homes in this way. Some of them did so because they were attracted to the foreign culture, but for most of them, these pagan mosaics were probably just the latest fashion. Despite these foreign influences, Tzipori begins to acquire a reputation as a center of Jewish thought. Well-known scholars and priestly families who have been forced to flee from Judea make their home in Tzipori, leaving their mark on its cultural life. The leader of the Jewish community, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi and the Sanhedrin, moved to Tzipori from neighboring Bet She'arim. He establishes close ties of friendship with the Roman authorities and especially with the Emperor Caracalla. There are many legends about Rabbi Uda Nassi, whose wealth the royal homage paid him, his unlimited powers, and his stature. Thanks to his efforts, the Jewish society and economy in Palestine recover and prosper. But his greatest achievement is the compilation of the oral law in one official authorized version, the Mishnah. It is the basis for the Talmud and for all Jewish law since then. After Rabbi Yehuda Nasi dies and is buried at Bet She'arim, Tzipori retains its status. The makeup of the population changes with time, but the city remains an important Jewish center. Over the centuries, Tzipori has changed and altered. It was a lone star for Christians who believed that it was the home of Hannah and Joachim, parents of Mary, mother of Christ. The Crusaders changed its name to Le Safuri and built the fortress from which they set out to fight the Muslims at Karnei Hittim. Under the Arabs, it became a village named Safuriye. Today, the site again bears the original name of the city, now being uncovered in all its splendor. The ornament of all Galilee.